But remember, this stuff is for your third exam. Oh. <laughs> Not this weekend, but the following weekend. So this weekend, you have exam two, all the bacteria stuff we reviewed yesterday. So right now, we're starting the material for exam three. So chapter five, I didn't think it was done. This is great. Were you done with the review? You said you were in your yeah. yeah, I checked it and everything on there just went over. You but sure? I have a lot of redundant questions. Okay. Okay. So some of the questions on the test will be easy and some of them will be hard. Okay. You know, so what you remember. Anita, we missed you yesterday. Sorry, I have to go to the embassy in Miami, so. Oh, I gotta do that with my German boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So, in this chapter or this section, I actually used PowerPoints from the book, but I kind of modified them because I have a different way of teaching it. And we're just going to do an overview. So, read the PowerPoints when you're at home, and I'll do the best I can. I might have to write some stuff on the board. Okay. When it comes to microbial metabolism, we're talking about reactions that run in the cell. You know about catabolism of breakdown reactions, anabolism of building reactions, right? All these metabolic reactions have two very important parts to them. One is ATP. Metabolism is all about converting energy. Take energy from food, convert it into ATP, then you use the ATP to build new macromolecules that need to exist. Um, the other is enzymes. Enzymes are extremely important for running every step of every reaction. If you've done any metabolism at all, you know they're not simple reactions like A yields B. It's like A yields B, B yields C, C yields B, B yields E and F, and E and F yields G and H and I, and so they're long reactions. Different enzyme is required to run every step. Also in metabolic reactions, we see coupled reactions called redox reactions. That means the reactions are coupled. A reduction reaction happens as a result of an oxidation, and an oxidation can happen as a result of a reduction. What we see in biological systems of energy is actually oxry. Burning up your food is oxidation. Then the electrons and hydrogens that come from burning up your food, because you broke bond, are gathered up and used to make ATP. And then the ATP is used to run your biochemical and anabolic reactions. When you break up your food, every time you break a bond, electrons and hydrogens are released. That's oxidation. The cell gathers up those electrons and hydrogens and runs them through a reduction reaction. And that reduction reaction involves the making of ATP. And the reduction reaction actually reduces oxygen to water. So you break up your food. When you break up your food, you break all the bonds in your food. You're releasing a lot of energy from the bonds. And what happens? You sweat and you huff and puff because you're running and working and burning up your energy. So. All right, we're also going to talk about enzyme inhibitors. This is a type of drug. This is how we can hurt bacteria. If bacteria have a metabolism, they need an enzyme to run every metabolic reaction, every step of every reaction, just like we do. One way we can hurt the bacteria is to inhibit their enzyme. They can't run their metabolic reactions. Their metabolism hurts. They hurt. That's one way to harm bacteria with enzyme inhibitors. Then we're going to talk about aerobic cellular respiration. Your book actually uses slightly different terminology. Uh, I try to give you both terminologies, but in my book, I always called it aerobic cellular respiration as opposed to anaerobic cellular respiration, which your book just calls anaerobic fermentation. So you can create energy aerobically with oxygen, or without oxygen, you do it anaerobically. That's called fermentation. Then if you go to YouTube, 
and type in the search ATP and respiration crash course biology, it'll come up a nice little movie. But remember, the problem with a lot of the stuff in YouTube is they're talking about <coughs> human cells. They don't focus on bacterial cells. Even if you YouTube DNA replication and protein synthesis, which we're going to do in the next chapter, they're going to show you human cell DNA replication and protein synthesis. They're not going to show you bacterial cells, which is a little bit different. <coughs> okay. Don't make it hard. Don't make it hard. Make it easy. <coughs> Anaerobic cellular respiration. That's all you should have the formula. Here's your carbohydrate. Remember it's CH2O. Well, that's the same as C6H12O6. So here's your carbohydrate plus oxygen. So when you burn up your energy aerobically, or if a bacterium burns up his energy aerobically, he's digesting his carbohydrates in the presence of oxygen, exhale carbon dioxide, sweat, and here's your energy. And what do you do when you exercise? You generate body heat. <coughs> when you break down reactions, a lot of the energy is lost in heat. So, photosynthesis. Plants do the opposite. Plants do the opposite. Carbohydrates and oxygen are created, notice the arrows in a different direction, are created from carbon dioxide, water, and light energy, like sunlight. Photosynthesis is the opposite of aerobic cellular respiration. We eat carbohydrates from plants in the presence of the oxygen that the plants release. We exhale carbon dioxide and water is a waste product and we get energy to do work and we also get body heat which is necessary for our enzymes to work. Plants meanwhile will take light energy, water, and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that we exhale and produce oxygen and carbohydrates, which is what we need to produce energy. Here's anaerobic fermentation. Your carbohydrates, anaerobic, no oxygen, just your carbohydrates. You get two ATP from breaking your carbohydrate in half. You get some carbon dioxide, and you get a waste product because you couldn't break it down completely because you don't have oxygen. You might get the waste product ethanol, which is alcohol. Of course, the really good stuff was the stuff you stole from the lab and you put in the punch bowl at the party. But just make sure it's the right kind of ethanol because if it's not the processed kind, you could kill yourself drinking it. Or some different organisms produce lactic acid when they break down carbohydrates. So who's the organism that ferments to alcohol? Saccharomyces cerevisiae, right? Ferments grape juices to alcohol. What's the organism that ferments to lactic acid? Lactobacillus acidophilus. Does anybody remember who's the organism that ferments to butyric acid? Gangrene. I'm going to scoot down to the bottom. Oh, if I can. Christ, this is a long thing. And this is short, just so you know. I think I put them at the end. Maybe I moved them. Where the hell are they? Here it is. Pyruvic acid is your end product of glycolysis, right? So you break down your carbohydrate to pyruvic acid. And then if you ferment it, instead of digesting the pyruvic acid, you get lactic acid, which makes yogurt, cheese, and even our muscles do that. Right, lactobacillus acidophilus. Some organisms do alcoholic fermentation. That would be Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Some make acids like acetic acid. Remember Acetobacter acetate makes vinegar. Propionobacteria. What does proprinobacteria make? Holes in your face and holes in your Swiss cheese. Right? Acne. Propionobacterium acnes. And I don't know which species of propionobacterium they use for Swiss cheese, but it produces carbon dioxide bubbles. 
So that's what makes the holes in your Swiss cheese. And the propionic acid, now Swiss cheese has that tangy taste, probably from that. Um, here's another one we didn't talk about. I don't know what organism does that. Maybe Colton knows. Do you know about butane diol? Yeah. I don't know that one either. Butyric acid. Uh, this one is, hello, gangrene. Gas gangrene. Here's another one. This one's actually from your textbook. Uh, they say Clostridium does acetone and isopropanol, but I it disagrees with this figure. It gives you, you know, it's got the same one, but it doesn't say butyric acid. So I put both. I put the one from your book and the one from my old textbook. So the same figure, same thing. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Oh my God, there's so many freaking slides in this thing. There's no way we're going to get through them. Essential to metabolic reactions are ATP and enzymes. <coughs> metabolism equals metabolism and anabolism. It's all about energy exchanges. I hate to read from PowerPoint. You need to remember catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions. The catabolic reactions we're going to do. is all about how you break down your food and get energy out of the bonds in your food. This is going to be cellular respiration. Why do we call it cellular respiration? Because when you do this, that's inhalation and exhalation. Respiration is what happens at the level of your cells. 